on to mixing some filler. This filler, uh, they give you some reference here. So we're gonna start with a two inch diameter plop of material and add from the halfway mark. Add a little bit of hardener, mix that up, blend it in. It only takes three to five minutes for this stuff to start curing. And then we'll go back and we'll start sanding it. Uh, it's always recommended to do multiple layers as opposed to a big giant one, but we'll see. Okay, back about 15 to 20 minutes later, and I can already tell this this will take some work. You can feel it. Yeah. So setting up the sanding blocks is pretty easy and these contour shapes with the flat and the round 
certainly help with this particular application. So I would definitely recommend them for anybody that's working on small parts like this, especially parts that have little crevices that you just can't get your fingers or the folded paper into. And I'll mention this again later. I, I, you learn, and, and I definitely learned, you, you wanna take your time with the sanding. Take your time. There's a lot of this project that is time intensive, which is just sanding, blending your two materials together. And the more you do it, I, I bet you become more effective and efficient. You know how much pressure and how much time to apply to each piece. And I certainly learned a lot. Was not difficult. It is extremely dusty, so make sure you're wearing some sort of breathing protection. Even just a small dust mask is better than nothing at all. And then you know, make sure you have something to clean up your workspace. Stop here, go clean it up, come back for round two. Okay, back, sanded, cleaned up. Not looking terrible, but definitely low spot, low spot. And I also decided to tape off the areas that I'm not interested in getting more 
filler material on. So I'm going to mix up a small batch and do a whole lot less talking this time. Back in in 15 to 20 minutes. Round two, looking pretty good. About to sand it. A few high spots in these corners. Maybe a little bit of a low spot here. This looks really good. So I'm going to sand that with a higher grade. See how it goes. There is so much sanding involved with this, but you'll, you'll want to take your time. Don't jump ahead, work through the various grits, work up to your final grit that you want to get to and it will pay off in the end. All right, back at it. Actually the next morning, I think I have gotten it pretty good, pretty close to where, you know, we should say rough is acceptable. So at this point, I'm going to switch over to this easy sand. I've never worked with it before, so I am curious to see the differences. Same type of application, makes a small blob of it with some hardener, apply it, smooth it out, and 20 minutes later, come back and sand. So I know I have one little pinhole there. It's actually hidden, so I'm not that worried about it, but I wanna make sure that that doesn't crack. So I'll mix some of this up, apply it, and then let it rest. And we'll come back and we'll do some more sanding. So the consistency is about the same as the other filler. And the smell is, is the same sickly sweet. But what you notice, or at least I noticed when I was mixing it up, it does feel a little more sandy, a little more grit to it. And then the application itself was noticeably lighter. The, more of a, a joint compound that you would work with on drywall, right, the, the spackle material. So working with it was slightly easier for me as a novice, and it flowed really well into these high spots and low spots and, and helped me even things out. The cure time, though, is the same. It's, it's quick, so you have to be smart about how you're working with it. And again, these, these gift cards, perfect perfect spatulas for working with this.
already starting to congeal. So that's what I get to work with. So come back in 20 minutes and sand it down, see what it turned out.